That's right. East 9. So, we're going to be doing a final review and a bit of a grand tour of East 9 today. Uh, I've been streaming East 9. I've been uploading videos on East 9. I did a whole Let's Play series that I've been uploading to this channel, including a lunatic all-boss run. So you can see the lunatic difficulty. What That's the hardest difficulty in the game. And you can take a look at what all the bosses are like, how those fights look like, if you're interested in that. I also did a review on the demo of East 9. I enjoyed it so much, I picked up the game, I put over 60 hours into it, I got 100% achievements, alright? I did it all! It's a bit of a humble brag there. So it's time, it's time for a final review, which we're doing right here, right now. So, we're gonna take you on a tour of the game, we're gonna talk about the game, all the features, and we're going to, uh, hopefully, help you decide whether or not East 9 is a game for you. When you start a new game, you have six difficulties to choose from. I play it on Lunatic, and it is damn hard. It is difficult. There is no achievement for Lunatic for you achievement hunters out there. It is only Inferno. So Inferno is the hardest achievement. I play it on Lunatic because I am one. I'm going to go ahead and load my game here so I can show you guys a bit of a grand tour through the game. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hide anything from you. I'm going to tell you what I dislike about the game as well and what I like about the game during the video and at the very end when we do our pros, cons, and final thoughts. So, this is the city that you spend most of your time in, in the game. That's my first con. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Most of your gameplay is set in this city of Balduk. It is implemented in the story where they're like, Oh, you know, we, we have this curse that stops us from leaving Balduk. We can't even get out of here. So, they implement it in the story in a way. But it seemed, it feels a little cheap, like, very limited. That you're you're chilling in this city and you know there's not much outside it that's not saying there is nothing outside it. you do get to venture outside eventually and there are some cool looking areas but i wish the game had more of that but i'll show you guys i'm gonna take you on the grand tour so this is where your your main base is this this bar here right and it's where you do a lot of your uh, a lot of your crafting your purchasing of goods and that type of thing you can come into the Say the word and into here it. and craft all sorts of accessories, ready, enhance your weaponry. Uh, hey, this so character here allows you to upgrade that. materials from one rank to another, so you can kind of like say, take 10 of one material, upgrade it to the next rank. There's all sorts of interesting characters, I'll call them. Some of them are a little annoying. Um, the voice acting is, is pretty good for the most part. Uh, some of the voices are just, you know, those, those childish kid-like things. You, you get it with the English voice acting. If any of you have ever watched a dubbed anime versus the sub, it, it can get a little... Eh. Sure but there's a lot to... There's a lot to to do in this game. There's a lot of upgrades, a lot of NPCs that help you do things. Right. You bring materials and you upgrade certain you defenses that know. are active in uh, the Grimwald Nox. And if you play the game, you'll know what that is. That's like a certain event that you keep going back to and fighting tough battles and you get to bring these structures in with you and you can upgrade them, craft them, you can upgrade your weapons. There's a whole ton of side quests that you'll pick up from these this bulletin board here as you play through the game. There's food buffs as well that you can cook and bring that with you so you can use that at any time from your inventory. There is an NPC that will have all of the vendors you've ever found in the game. She can purchase things from all of those vendors. So there's a lot of, a lot of cool I don't know, a quality of life and upgrades you can go for in your, your home base of the dandelion, that's your, your bar. Now, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice probably skips in the video coming up right now as I run through. Take a look at this. Keep in mind, you can see it a little bit right there. I'll do some jumps as well because that'll probably really show you. Yeah, there's a little bit. That is one of my cons real quick right there is as you're traveling through the city, it kind of gets a little jittery lag. It's it's just as it kind of loads in the next area, but if you roam around the city using your various zip line, gliding, all these cool techniques that you'll unlock, which is a fun way to traverse the city. There's also a uh, wall run that you can do as well to traverse the city, and it's it's quite intuitive, I suppose. Really, really nice ways that you can traverse this pretty detailed city. Now, again, one of my cons is the fact that you're in the city for so long. A lot of the game takes place in this city, and it gets, I don't know, gets a little little boring, I suppose. 
But that's not to say the game is bad or the world design is bad. The world design is actually quite good, and that's why I kind of wish we had more, I don't know, unique areas rather than just the city all the time. And I'm going to show you some of those areas outside the city. They're much larger. But a lot of your time is spent here. But it's a nice, it's a nice, I don't know, nice, well-designed world. So take a look real quick. If you've ever played an East game, you'll know that you unlock skills as you use them. As you unlock, as you use them, their levels will increase. You'll see level max, max. As you use these skills, they will increase in in levels, and and that'll reduce the cost of it, the SP cost, and and it'll make it more utilizable, I suppose. You can use it a lot more. Um, in addition to that, we do have some of our costumes if you're into that cosmetic type of stuff like i said a lot of accessories to adjust your playstyle from a more defensive or offensive you can apply debuffs to enemies if you choose to do that a lot of ways to customize your characters and of course there's six party members in the game and you can have three with you at all times let's see if we can go into a battle real quick and um show you what that looks like in fact We'll go... Yes, we'll go over here. I can see a red dot on the mini-map at the bottom left. We'll go over towards that fight. Oh, another one just appeared. And we'll show you what it looks like. As you wander around the city, you'll see these pop up. And when you activate them, or step on them, it'll start a fight. I am really, really strong right now, so that's why the fight is going to seem relatively simple. But enemies will spawn, you'll kill them, and you'll gain some resources, whether that's like dropped materials, gold, or knocks at the top left. You'll always get knocks if you're clearing the these little things out, these little like black orbs. You'll get knocks, and knocks is used for unlocking areas in the game that you need to progress through the game's story. So you need to get like 100 knocks to unlock the next areas. And in addition to that, you can spend your knocks to up to unlock. Like, pretty rare stuff, like permanent stat upgrades and materials for difficult, um, crafts, like weapons. And every once in a while, when you clear one of these, you'll get this box that appears, and you can get random loot out of it. So, it makes wandering the city fun, as those pop up. There is a whole lot of collectibles in the game, like, co open every chest, explore every area, get all the petals and graffiti, if you take a look at the that little box up above here, above my head. There's a lot of collectibles, and that's, that's tracking my progress through it. I have all of them, because I'm that good. <laughs> Not that good. Um, I just spent a great deal of time in the game, because I actually I enjoyed it. I really did. Um, oh, I don't have all the treasure in Total Explorer at the top left. I, I think I loaded a, a previous... Oh, yeah, yeah, I loaded a previous save so I can show you guys the game. But we're going to go ahead, and we're going to port over to one of the more open-world zones... So I can show you guys the few zones that are outside of the city. You can see what it's like. This is one of them. This is right outside one of the city gates. This is like one of the first zones you can come to outside of the city. But it takes a while to get to this. And some of the other East games have more of that large open world feel to it than this game does. It does feel a little uh, restricted at times because you're in the city for... For so long, so much of the game is always in the city, and whether you open it, whether whether you go into an open world zone or not, you will be back in that city soon. I promise. So you you keep coming back to it a lot. Let's talk a little bit about the story while we just run around here. The story surprised me. In my original review, I was like, eh, "The story's gonna be lighthearted, like all of the East games." That's not really true. I was I was. Slightly incorrect. No, it's not as lighthearted as the other ones. Some of the stories, um, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Some of the stories, um, I don't know. Main, main things they touch on, like death and, and some more sad stuff, I'll say. It's, it can get pretty grim at times, and it's not grim like, okay, all your main characters are gonna die, there's, there's, there's... A horrible feeling at the end of the game. It's not like that. You don't have to worry about being depressed at the end because I know a lot of people aren't into that. Me, I, I like that. I like that those dark stories that don't always end well. But the game does have those darker elements where characters do die and things don't always work out a hundred percent. So you don't have to worry about it being all all 
depressing or really old childlike kitty stuff that we've been seeing in our in our RPGs for the past 10 years where everything's always got to be perfect and no one can ever die. I I hate that stuff. I hate that I don't know, that childish crap. So, one thing during combat that you'll see is if you time a roll or a, or a block, that that orange thing is a block. There you go. You'll get a flash guard. A flash guard guarantees crits for the duration of that timer. And it is really good, but I prefer the dodge. The dodge makes you completely immune to damage for the duration of the bar. There it is, flash move. That bar, I cannot be hit while that's on the screen. I'm also wearing an accessory that doubles the duration of that bar if you're wearing the accessory. If you pull off a flash guard, it will say flash move times two. Uh, flash guard? Flash dodge? Whatever it's called. The... Um, Duration is doubled. There's also one for the block. If you're more of the dude that likes to block rather than dodge, there's one that doubles that as well. I love it. I like that because if you're skilled in combat and you pull those off, they will play. They will pay out really, really, really well, and it will uh, definitely help you in combat for sure. So let's um take a quick look at the what I would consider. One of the more interesting progression points of the game, there's stuff called Sacramentals, which you can craft, you can find them rarely, and they, they alter the game in a in a fair way, where it's like, okay, if you sit idle, you'll you'll heal, like which is nice. You can double your your gift charge, which is like an orange bar that will fill up as you fight. I'm sorry, I, that, that's actually incorrect. It's not gift. The gift is something different. Gift is, is the bar that allows you to guide and glide and stuff. The boost is the one that I have. Boost gauge charges faster. That's the orange. That's the one that gives you like a a Super Saiyan form during fight, during combat. You'll see that orange bar at the bottom right. As that fills up, once it reaches at least halfway, you can use it and it'll uh, increase your damage and make you a much more formidable foe in combat, which you will need for the harder difficulties for sure. I utilize that all the time in boss fights. We're going to take a look at a boss fight in just a second so you guys can see what that's like. But I'm going to talk again a little bit about the progression. The progression in this game, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it. And the reason for that is you unlock skills just by using skills. You level skills just by using said skill. And when the skills level, it, they don't feel much stronger. It just reduces the SP cost for it. In addition to that, there is nothing you choose when you're leveling. There's no talents, there's no spending your attributes, there's not even like, hey, you need to be this level to equip this gear. There's nothing restricting you from equipping the best gear, other than like progressing through the story. But there's nothing, there's no like milestone levels that you can you can hit. You see Adol is 99, and he's got a heck of a lot more health and stuff, but I did use a lot of these things here called elixirs that increase their max stat permanently so you can find these and that's a form of progression but you spend it there's no there's no real choices other than i guess like who are you spending these on but there's no talents or anything of the sort you you equip two accessories your your defensive armor and your weapon so there's nothing down here these are like cosmetics where i got a little picard on his on his arm but there's no real meat to the progression system, which was definitely a disappointment for me. Let's um, let's jump into a boss fight right now, though, so you guys can see what that's all about. Let's do this. So here we are. This is through the game's time attack mode. We're fighting one of the bosses. That's right, the time attack mode that you can unlock by playing the game. You get to fight the bosses you already fought. Again, if you want to do that, if you're into that type of stuff, the game does have that. So there is some content that that you will unlock after the game is done, as well as a new game plus i'm playing on lunatic difficulty right now so if i take a single hit i'm probably dead there we go flash move which again is really important to pull off there we go and time attack mode sets you to the level appropriate to the boss fight so you can't like over level them or anything so you have to fight them like as they were meant to be fought. And Lunatic Difficulty is just nuts. Yeah. 
So if you take a look below that enemy's health bar, you'll see a blue bar over there. That is like their stun bar. If that hits full, he'll be stunned for a little bit and he'll take some additional damage. This particular boss will take additional damage. If, there we go, there's some additional damage. I'm gonna use my, my boost, my Super Saiyan form. I'm gonna do a lot of damage here. There we go. He felt that one. That was pretty good. So, oh man, he's in, oh, he's in Super Saiyan form himself. He does not like hits on the head. He takes a lot of damage from that. And if you want, you can swap to other characters, which I'll show you, which will probably get me killed, but so be it. It got me killed. Don't worry, I still have other characters. And we win. There we go. That was one of the boss fights in Lunatic. Not too far in the game. I didn't want to play one that uh, was too far in and spoiled too much. So there we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. And I did all of these before. Look at that. Cleared all my progress. But all right, let's move to the final portion to the pros, cons, and final thoughts. Let's do this. The pros, cons, and final thoughts for East Monstrum Nox. We have one of the songs playing in the background. This one's called Decision, if you want to know. Love it. Pros, let's do this. The combat feels great. Uh, smooth and easy to control, even with mouse and keyboard. I played mouse and keyboard the entire way, entire through the, the whole game. Didn't have to worry about anything uh, not working properly or feeling awful. Everything worked. The dodging, the blocking, the attacking, everything felt right. It felt good. And for the most part, I used the default keys. So I know a lot of people are, are concerned when they see like action style games like this about whether or not uh, a controller will be needed. It doesn't need doesn't need to be used for this game, and that's always a pro for me. Super challenging game. On the hardest difficulty, it's it's nuts. It is difficult, and I love that in my games. I love difficult games, but there are six difficulties, so if that scares you, just know that there's going to be a difficulty there for you. Whether you want it to be a breeze, walk in the park, you're never going to die. That's there if you want that, but if you want that difficult, challenging experience, that is certainly there. East is one of the harder games out there with uh, Lunatic Difficulty. Love it. Tons of extra content to do. And there's a lot of side quests, collectibles. There's that time attack you unlock, the boss rush, and there's New Game Plus if you do want to play through the game again. So there's a lot of extra content. I won't say it's like, oh, the most jam-packed game with, with extra content. It's not, but there's a lot to do there. There's, there's enough in there that you'll feel like your money was well spent. You know, like you... you got a good deal of playtime in there. For me, a completionist, I spent over 60 hours in the game. Slightly over 60, I believe. And uh, there was a lot to do. Soundtrack. It is great. Playing one of the songs in the background, I like it. Uh, gets the blood pumping a little bit, you know? Makes me want to fight stuff and, and attack and kill and, you know. And there's more calm music as well. That's just, uh, it's nice. It's, it's pretty nice to listen to. Calming relaxing stuff that you like every once in a while, you know? You gotta, you gotta have that wind down. Cons. The character progression... Ugh, it's extremely lacking. It's... It always is in these East games, and that's a shame. I'm hoping to see that improve in future titles where there's like a little bit of choice, a little bit of customization in there, and it's not just that bland, linear progression that we see in this game and, um... in this game series. And... There might be a change to that. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit uh, as we finish up here. Uh, the enclosed in the city world design feels restrictive. It's you're in the city for a large portion of the game, like 80% of the game. You're in this city, maybe like 75. I had to be real, but it's it's a large portion of the game. You're you're, you're stuck in this city, and it's part of the story. Like oh, you're trapped in here because of a curse, and you learn that really early on. So don't feel like that's a like crazy spoiler or something you learn that really on early on in the game that like you're stuck in this city and you'll start to like branch out like you'll get out a little bit but it's not enough like those zones are cool they're much larger and they feel a lot more open but if only the game was like pretty much entirely designed like that or at least more of it it would it would feel better $30 day one DLC that provides massive boosts 
You really don't need it, though. Um, I'm going to jump real quick to the store page and show you exactly what I mean. If we take a look here at the consumable bundle, this was a day one DLC. And it has elixir sets, which are permanent stat upgrades. And Tempest elixirs, which are instant level ups. Twilight Shards, another way to just buy stuff. You could buy more Tempest Elixirs with them and more Elixirs. There's a lot of really overpowered stuff in here. You really don't need it. I didn't buy it, and I played, like, look, I don't even own it. I could buy it right now if I wanted to, which I don't. I don't I don't really enjoy this type of stuff. I don't like seeing that. And I just, I gotta call it out as, like, a pretty crappy thing. But th this series will always do it. And these RPGs always do that kind of stuff. And... Just, you could always say, well, don't buy it if you don't like it. That's exactly what I did. I didn't buy it. But I felt I need to, I need to let you guys know that that is something that that they did do that is out there. And uh, you definitely don't need it. The game doesn't feel like it's, it's really tailored around it, so you don't have to worry about that. So you'll be good to go without it. But it's there. If that's something that really bothers you and you don't want to support someone that does it, I understand that. But um, it's really not that big of a deal. Final thoughts, uh, East 9 is a solid addition to the East series. It falls short on its slightly restrictive world design, but certainly makes up for it on the gameplay side of things. Challenging boss fights and a ton of side quests make for an enjoyable experience with plenty to do. While East 9 is certainly not the perfect RPG, it's a step in the right direction for the series. Now, I want to touch on one other thing. Apparently, this will be the last game in the series of this design. Not the last game of the East series, but the last game with this type of design. What does that mean? Oh no. That's what they said. They said they're going to take like a new direction going forward with the E series. I have no idea what that means. It's a little a little scary cuz you're like, well, this is not really bad. These are good games, these East games. Um personally, I think East 9 was an upgrade uh first East 8. And a lot of people don't feel that way. A lot of people are like, "Oh, East 8 is definitely better than 9." I don't know. I'm an odd one. What can I say? I prefer East 9. Um, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen with the series. I'm definitely looking forward to the future games of the series to see what they do. But hopefully that um, that change that they're looking to implement in the East series kind of touches on the character progression system a little bit in the future. I'd like to see, I don't know, some sort of customization, some sort of like choices, talents, something like that. But we'll see. We'll definitely cover the future East games and probably some of the older ones if you guys want to see that as well. I definitely got to play some of the older ones and maybe cover that as well, do some content. But if you guys like this content, please throw us a sub. Always appreciate it. Really, really helps us out. And uh, hit that like button if you did like the content. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Skidat! <laughs>